Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here, weatherweb.net, and it is Thursday the 8th of August. Thanks again for watching. Just a reminder that the site is kept free of charge by the adverts that you see around the screen here. It's when you come back and use the site and use the adverts, it's that that keeps us free of charge. So thank you for your continued support, and don't forget to tell your friends about what we're doing here too. And of course you can follow us on Twitter, at WeatherSchool. Now, I've got my best weather anorak on this morning, and this sort of picture really excites me. We're out in Borth at the moment on the west coast of Wales, and uh, this was the scene at 7 o'clock this morning. Look at that beautiful alto cumulus cloud. Uh, you can see it was around about nine or 10,000 feet, a perfect textbook example of alto cumulus cloud. And it's even better when the satellite picture picks up on it as well. This was the picture at 7 o'clock. And you can see here the finger look of Alta Cumulus Cloud. There it is, down the western coasts of Wales, running into southwestern parts of England. Didn't really have a lot underneath it, but it was there nonetheless. I'm going to do a quick weather school video about this later on, because it's such a great example of that Alta Cumulus Cloud. An articumulus normally indicative of a destabilising atmosphere normally occurs on that um, retreating side of the ridge and that's exactly where it is. You probably think I was getting far too excited about that articumulus and you probably right. So let's move on to the Central England Temperature Daily, daily Values. This is from the Met Office, it's their provisional data and um, I just wanted to show you this because it's just quite interesting to see where we've been through the year. So what we're looking at here is this um, black line here, this bold line here is the standardised normal. So this is the mean uh, of the Central England temperature. We got the pink here which is the highest in the record and the blue here which is the lowest in the record and then the we are here okay so the blue line you can see kind of going up and down here that's the daily values of this year you can see us in there so if we just um, zoom in you can see how um, we got pretty warm there for a time through July with the blue colours there uh, indicating um, that we were getting temperatures as all pretty well uh, well above normal for CET but they've now been down and they're coming close to the CET values um, to the mean values over the uh, over the beginning part of August and the latter part of July but generally we're not that far away from the mean just at the moment although last month and the month before were warm in terms of CET temperature so this is going to be an interesting one to monitor over the coming months. And the forecast for the next uh, seven day period across Europe is for it to be staying uh, warmer than normal. This is the temperature anomaly um, running up to next Thursday. And you can see here the pinky red colours look across many central and uh, northern parts of the country. So in temperatures above normal for the time of year. Look at the mass of warmth across uh, eastern parts of Europe there running into Russia. Very warm there. Again, um, of course, they had it very warm last year and uh, temperatures starting to pick up there again. But look how chilly it is across central parts of Europe. Now, as I always say, there's a temperature balance. There's only a certain budget of radiation across the globe. So we have a temperature balance and energy budget that we have to deal with. So where one place is warm, another place is cooler. And this is the states for the next seven days. They really have had it cool. Look at this mass of colder than normal temperatures stuck in those central parts of the states. This is uh, almost four degrees below normal. Nearer normal out towards the west, above normal down to the south. But this mass of colder air again that's moving into that uh, central and eastern part of the states, keeping things pretty chilly there. We haven't looked at sea temperatures either for a while, have we? So uh, let's have a quick look and see what's going on. Notice the warm water still around the British Isles look, and also notice how warm it is across most of the Atlantic too, with above normal temperatures, particularly here off the eastern coast of the states. That's almost five degrees above normal. Temperatures start to pick up as well through the central parts of the Atlantic here. They're kind of hovering around about normal conditions, but notice the cold La Nina conditions here look off the western coast of uh, South America, and how warm the uh, western Pacific is here. <coughs> excuse me, temperatures in the north there, again running at 2 to 4 degrees Celsius above normal. Through the Indian Ocean as well, we've got temperatures running above normal for the time of year, 2 by 1 to 2 degrees. Now, what's interesting is that all of these um, ocean temperatures have an impact 
on the atmosphere above. And so these will be driving the uh, weather factory as it gets itself geared into more wintertime conditions in the northern hemisphere, summertime in the southern hemisphere. So we'll be looking at this uh, regularly now, running through the next few months as things gear up as we head in towards winter. But of course, according to one newspaper this morning, there's no point even thinking about the forecast because it's going to be a heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've got to laugh at it, haven't you? You really have. Uh, oh, I reckon they're going to be printing on Diana still alive next. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, where they get that story from, I don't know. Yes, the uh, GFS was showing it as quite warm yesterday, but of course they've done the usual thing. Ring round until you find somebody who's stupid enough to, uh, to actually uh, tell you what you want to hear. But anyway, moving on. And this is really why I think we desperately, desperately need kite marking weather forecasting to prove um, the provenance of weather forecasts and of the people producing them so that you, the people who use them, can have a good, a good indication as to whether these people who are spouting these ideas actually know what they're talking about, whether they're just hobbyists who've decided to set themselves up and call themselves meteorologists, whether they're fully trained meteorologists, and also what their customers say about them. I'm on my box again, on it. I should say, by the way, I still describe myself as an amateur weatherman, and you know, there are plenty of amateurs out there who do a really, really good job, far better than the professionals in many circumstances. But I still think we need to get even those people to undertake some sort of validation so that we can put a stamp on that says these people are credible. <sighs> right. Deep breaths. Anyway, let's just take a quick look at the CFS and then we'll look at the uh, short period. This is the CFS from yesterday and just interesting to monitor this down day, see how it's changing. This is the week one forecast, shows us above normal heights look here towards the south of the country, low the normal up towards the north jet through here. So hence the reason for the more unsettled conditions that um, I've been hinting at for a long time now, um, particularly across the northern areas where I said it was going to be wetter to the south where I said it was going to be drier. And if we uh, just take a look at week two look, you notice the trough still quite strong up there to the north. It has weakened it to some extent, but still got the jet stream blowing through here. So I think uh, we're still on for the unsettled weather at the end of next week into the following weekend. But it's always going to be northern and western areas that see uh, most of that rain, with the south seeing less of it. But I think even there, becoming breezier and uh, a higher risk of some proper rain um, during uh, the last part of next week into the weekend. I think the CFS not doing too bad a job of this one. This is week three. And you can see here that the trough is by then moved out towards the uh, west of the country in here, look, with the ridge building out towards the east. So what this is hinting at is that we've seen improvement coming in from the south and the east. Showers and outbreaks of rain through Scotland, Ireland and western parts of Wales, but better conditions out towards the east. And with that pressure building, which I think will take place during the week, so I think we're looking from about the 22nd onwards, um, by week four the CFS showing us dominated by high pressure, and uh, winds generally by then will be coming in as an east to south easterly more than likely. So this is our warm and fine end to the month. So all in all, uh, not looking too bad. I think the main periods for August really we've got to look for are between around the 16th and the 21st has been quite unsettled and then the 22nd onwards as uh, things improving. But what about the short term? So this is the forecast for today. This is the forecast chart for today, Thursday. Sea ridge of high pressure through the country. Most places are dry, but this front moving in from the west, bringing some patchy rain across Ireland and western Scotland. I think it then tracks eastwards during the course of tonight, although it's only a very, very weak feature. Takes some patchy rain with it, but dry conditions then following into the west. That means that by Friday um, we're going to find a front clearing away towards the east, taking patchy outbreaks of rain with it. Um, I think dry conditions coming into the west, so gradually brightening up from the west with sunny spells and just scattered showers. Quite a breezy one on Friday as well. Now for Saturday, um, most places dry, some sunny spells, but this area of low pressure bringing some cloud and rain to southern parts of Ireland during the course of the afternoon. I think that just sort of slips into the far west of Wales and the far southwest of England later. Um, and probably we see a few showers for northern and western parts of Scotland. For most though it's dry, there's sunny spells around, and uh, I think we're going to be finding light winds and uh, mainly southwesterlies. So I think just need to watch this area of rain out towards the west over the next couple of days to see how far east it gets. 
On Sunday, the low is centred over Scotland. Um, it moves these fronts eastwards, but again, these are only really weak fronts, so we, you know, we're generally dry across some more southern areas. Picking up a west to northwesterly flow could bring some showers out towards the west, only one or two, and I think generally it's a breezy, brighter day. On Monday, the flow goes more into the northwest, so it's a day of sunshine and scattered showers. Again, most towards the north and the west, many areas dry. Could just be one or two heavier showers affecting these eastern coasts. And then for Tuesday, well, the ridge of high pressure is back in again, so one or two showers across the eastern coast, but generally it looks as if it should be a dry day with some sunny spells. I think one or two showers perhaps affecting western Scotland, and they may also trouble northern and western parts of Ireland, but generally it's dry, the sunny spells, and just one or two showers. So if you get the impression for the next week that it is going to be mainly dry, then really you're not a million miles off, because that's exactly how it looks. This is the total rainfall taking us through to the 13th, and uh, what to notice is how the totals down to the south here look. We're looking at just 3 to 7 millimetres across many southern parts of England. Most of the rain here in Northern Ireland, northern and western parts of Scotland, 20 to 40 millimetres here, and that's perfectly believable. A little bit more perhaps around the North Welsh coast and the northwest of England, just from those weak fronts that come through but as you can see it's a game of two halves really the north seeing most of the rainfall the south not much at all so we're going to stick with the August forecast for now no real changes in that um, least of the rainfall down to the south most for the north and the west of Scotland and for the north of Ireland too and remaining basically warm we'll see how that shapes up shall we by the end of the month so lots for you to consider there. Thanks again for watching weatherweb.net. Uh, and don't forget, watch out for that heat wave. I wonder when it'll become a killer heat wave. <laughs> anyway, there's no heat wave there at all, is there? Um, but once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget we kept free of charge by the adverts you see around the screen here. So uh, whatever you're doing today, keep the sun shining and bye for now.